Hey everybody, Dave here. Hope you're having an awesome day. So, a few weeks ago I built this little guy here out of wood, and this was a really fun build. If you haven't seen it, go check out that video. But my buddy took this and he actually took calibers and measured up the whole thing and he rebuilt the whole thing in CAD uh, to the exact same size and scale. So I have a 3D model of this, and we thought that'd be kind of fun to actually maybe produce some of these. Um, so I was thinking about building a second robot, and so I did a sketch of a second robot, and I was gonna build it out of wood again, and my buddy was like, hey, instead of that, why don't we do a video where we go through the process of how we build it in CAD? So I thought, yeah, that sounds pretty fun. So come on, let's do it. Okay, already I can hear some of my regular viewers freaking out and going, no, Dave, don't go to the dark side. Don't go to 3D printing. Rest at ease. I want to assure you that I still have every intention on doing scratch builds and building stuff out of junk and trash. I just love it. It's so much fun to build something with my hands. I am using 3D printing more as a tool uh, for my 1M robots. So, and 3D printing is interesting because, uh, for example, my buddy Christian took my wooden design of this, did all the cal uh, measurements and calibrations on it, rebuilt it in CAD, and then gave me the files. We actually ended up with uh, this one here it has some sagging on it and it didn't work properly. Um, so we went through about three rounds of failures in printing and then we finally got a good print. The good print took about six hours to print and uh, that's this little guy here. This is the print. Uh, he's not glued together yet, but um, this was about six hours of printing about two hours of sanding and priming, and he's not even painted yet. So 3D printing is a really amazing tool, but it's not this like magic bullet. So what we decided was, hey, because we have these little robots, it might be fun to actually just do one from scratch. So I sketched up some concepts. I emailed them to Christian. Christian built it out in CAD. He emailed it back to me. We got together on FaceTime. We went through and actually edited and moved and tweaked things. And it actually was a really fun process and a little bit different process than I normally do. So let's go take a look at the process of how we went through this. All right, so this is the part I was telling you about. It looks pretty decent from the front, but then when you start to examine a little bit closer on the side, you can see it started to sink in on itself. And it's definitely us just learning how many supports and how to build this thing. But here we got the wooden robot on the right, the 3D printed bot on the left, and actually pretty cool to have something like this. You can see how Christian cored out the inside, just takes a little bit less material and maybe prints a little faster. So this is the original sketch of the first bot that I made. And here's the second bot. I wanted them to look like they were companions, but not the same exact robot. So I made him a little bit bigger. So here's a little fun footage that Christian sent over to me. I don't really know anything about CAD, but uh, I let him do his magic. Um, him working off of my sketches. You can see the underlay there. Kind of cool to just build right over the top of it. You can see some of the inner coring. And I gotta say, to see this thing come to life is really a lot of fun. So he sent it over to me. I felt like it was a little bit squatty. We had a FaceTime call. We chatted through it. I stretched it out, readjusted some things. He fixed that and then started to put together for the build plate for printing. Now, this you, you go in and build your supports. We are not experts at this, so by any means, if somebody in the comments says, oh my goodness, your settings are horrible, <laughs> be kind to us, but we'll, help, we'll take any help we can get. So here's the final build plate. And I gotta say, in 3D printing, this is kind of a magical part to see something coming out of nothing. It's pretty amazing. So as amazing as 3D printing is, it can be a little intimidating. Um, there is a, quite a bit of post-process work. Uh, here you, I am just popping them off of the build plate. And then once they're popped off the build plate, you gotta clean them in a denatured alcohol. This is to get the additional resin off of them. And then once they're clean, you can UV cure them. And then once they're UV cured, then you can actually start doing the sanding and cleaning. There's all the little bumps from the supports. Um, sometimes there's little holes that show up in the printing. So I just used a little bit of UV resin, hit it with a UV light, but I gotta sand and clean all this stuff off. You can see here's some additional cleaning that's gonna be, need to be done. So although it is not major, 
all these little things add up. This bot here, I spent about three hours doing sanding just because it had quite a bit of parts to it. Um, using 150 to start just to kind of rip through all those little bumps and then I'll kind of work through the different sanding. But as I'm sanding, there's these weird little divots and I don't want to sand and sand and sand. So I took some UV resin here again, just kind of globbed it on, flattened it out with the popsicle stick here and it kind of self levels through it my uv cure and then i'm able to sand this out and that actually worked pretty nice then do some wet sanding this is like 250 and then i worked my way up to a thousand just to get it nice and smooth then took it into the sink took a toothbrush and kind of cleaned all the excess powder off dried it off and then once that's done then you can actually uh, prime it now for the priming, I've started using this automotive primer. It's It kind of fills gaps and stuff. It's pretty nice. And then I thought, I'm gonna paint this thing red. So I painted this gloss red, and then I thought red and gold, really nice combination. Now the gold paint that I used was an enamel paint, and it just was too globby and streaky. So I thought I'm gonna mask this all off and spray it with a gold spray paint. So. I forgot that the globbiness would show, so when I sprayed it, it looked horrible, so I had to sand it all back down, sprayed it again. I was like, oh, this looks so good, but I got a ton of overspray because I was lazy in my masking. So I thought, well, I'll just mask the gold off, and then <laughs> it ripped all my gold off, so I was like, oh, forget it. So I just sprayed the whole thing red again, and I'm going to figure out the gold part later, but here's all the components spray painted red. Purchased some aluminum tubing instead of wood for this build, and it actually worked out really nice. I was able to get some really nice precise measurements. I wrote them all down. Then I used this tubing cutter used for plumbing, um, which cut these parts really nice. I originally tried using a saw, but it just kind of went all over the place. Now, because these tubes are aluminum color, I did have to paint them gold, so I'm kind of just putting all the pieces together and just brushing it gold. Um, brushing the little shield here, accent um, black. And I wasn't super careful because I knew I was going to dry brush this gold over the top. And I just carefully drug the brush over the top edge and it actually worked really nice. Doing some additional detailing on the fist. Now for the length of the legs, I need to assemble the arm first because the arm goes all the way to the ground and drags on the ground. Once I've got the length of the arm, I can actually put the post in, put the hips in, and then I can swing the arm back down and figure out the measurement for the height of the leg. Once I got that, I was able to cut those again with the tubing cutter. I'll dry fit these into the feet. And it's actually working out really nice. Got a little peg for the head. I just use wood because it is going to be completely hidden. Doing a little bit of additional painting and detailing of the numbers. And then I took an acrylic gold. And I did have to do about four coats of this, but it went on a little bit thinner and worked pretty nice. Doing some additional detailing there adding a little black on the stripes a little black on the sole painting the legs gold because again they're aluminum now i was going to do this gold chipping but instead i thought let me try the black chipping and i ended up liking the black chipping a little bit more only because it stood out just a little bit stronger now for my chipping my recommendation is to deliberately be random but do it methodically and carefully. I don't know if that makes sense, but you want it to have this nice feel, but you don't want it to be repetitive in the same motion. So here it is all painted up. I just got to assemble it, add some glue in some certain areas, and I think I'm going to call this one finished. Uh, it turned out pretty cool. Okay, that was actually a really fun build slash process, kind of going through and thinking how to actually collaborate with another designer and think through something. So thank you, Christian. Really appreciate your help on this. This was a lot of fun. And now this guy's got a little buddy. So let's do some turnaround shots of this. And as always, it's a great day to be a toy nerd. Go make something awesome.